Prenatal vitamins can be so confusing. There are so many products on the market. They market so well to different people and it's really hard to make a good decision about what you want to take. In today's video, I'll give you my opinion about the most important factors when it comes to choosing a prenatal vitamin. And at the end, I'll show you what I've decided to take for this pregnancy. Hey guys, it's Leah. Welcome back. You're watching Mommy in the Moment. So today we're going to talk about prenatal vitamins and how to choose the best one for you. This can be so frustrating and so overwhelming because if you go to the grocery store or Target and you see all the choices that you have, I get like decision fatigue. It's ridiculous. The other thing is that the first trimester already presents a number of issues. So nausea, constipation, vomiting, upset stomach, which vitamins sometimes can only make worse. So it can be really difficult to determine what are you actually going to be able to take, even if you choose what's right for you. So a couple things, first of all, when you're choosing a prenatal vitamin, one, you should start taking it if you can before you get pregnant. The reason for this is many pregnancies are planned, but some pregnancies are not planned. If you are not already in a good nutritional state at the time of conception, you have an increased risk of uh, fetal malformation, specifically neural tube defects that have to do with mom's level of folic acid. So if you're able, go ahead and take a daily multivitamin. Most multivitamins, especially made for women, have the recommended amount of folic acid at 400 micrograms per day. So go ahead and get in the habit of taking that. If you are a young woman or if you're at risk for pregnancy, um, and by risk I mean that you're having intercourse with someone. <laughs> <laughs> or that you might have intercourse with someone. Um, so go ahead and start taking it before you get pregnant. Second of all, do you have any dietary needs? Now for me, I don't eat a lot of dairy unless it's specifically lactose free because I am lactose intolerant. It's not bad to the point where, you know, I get sick and I'm laid up, but it just doesn't settle with my, well with my stomach and many people are lactose intolerant. Um, and so one of the things that I look for in my prenatal vitamin is sufficient calcium because on a regular basis, I'm not drinking a whole lot of milk and eating a whole lot of yogurt unless I can find a lactose-free version. For you, maybe you've had a gastric bypass surgery, maybe you've had your gallbladder out or you have pancreatic insufficiency where you don't absorb fat-soluble vitamins very well, or maybe you have dietary restraints like you're a vegetarian or vegan uh, and you may need some extra B12, may have some issues with some other vitamins know yourself know your dietary restrictions and what holes you need to fill with your prenatal vitamin all right so now it comes to how do i pick which one um, with lucas with my first i was not i was sick i was so sick i would try to take a regular solid prenatal vitamin and i would throw up every time i could not take it um, and for so for him I did gummy vitamins plus a couple other supplements now the third thing that I like to say is the best vitamin for you is the one that you'll actually take okay the best vitamin for you is the one that you'll actually take you could have the absolute perfect dietary you know components in the vitamin but if you can't tolerate it and you're not gonna take it, or that pill is too big and you don't like doing it, so you don't, it's not gonna help you if it doesn't get in your body. <laughs> so choose something that you can take. So with Lucas, what I could take was gummy vitamins, and that's what I took. So I took the gummy ones, they were delicious. <laughs> so it was reinforcing, I would definitely remember to take them every day because they were like candy. Um, and so that's really important for you to think about. Now, one issue that I take with gummy vitamins is that they do not have some of the most important nutrients for pregnancy. So you may think that you're taking a complete prenatal vitamin, but there's some kind of glaring holes in them. So I went to the store and I took pictures of some of the more common uh, 
um, vitamins, kind of that people are aware of. Um, and if you look at the gummy vitamins, so look at Vitafusion and Smarty Pants, um, they have a great complement of folic acid. They have the folate that you're supposed to have. Um, I think that the uh, Smarty Pants also has DHA in it, and they have the other water and fat soluble vitamins that you need, but they do not have any calcium or iron. So my top three things that I look for in a prenatal vitamin are folate, calcium, and iron. So folate helps with neural tube, that's the formation of the back of the baby's spine and brain. Iron helps with for you not to become anemic during pregnancy and creating your own new blood cells. And calcium is important because the baby is drawing calcium from your skeleton to make their skeleton, and you don't want to end up with brittle bones at the end of this, okay? Um, so iron, calcium, and folate. Gummy vitamins do not have those in them for the most part. So if you're gonna choose a gummy vitamin, make sure that you're also chewing, choosing a calcium supplement. They have chewable calcium supplements. And then uh, iron supplement. Many of the over-the-counter iron supplements are just as good as prescription and they are more, they're easier to tolerate on your stomach than a full prenatal vitamin. All right, now some of the other prenatal vitamins on the market um, have great complement of the nutrients that you need. Um, so I looked at the Target brand, um, one a day prenatal soft gel that has uh, DHA in it and a couple others. And they had what they needed. They had the folate, they had the calcium, they had the iron, and they had the other vitamins, but the pills themselves are so big. They're so big. <laughs> And so my issue that I took with those was that it was just hard for me to swallow that pill and I often had a little bit of upset stomach because of it. Now the one a day prenatal soft gel, I'd have to say this time around did not give me, um, didn't make my nausea worse. So um, just keep that in mind. Sometimes the size of the pill can make a big difference on how well you're able to take it. Another thing that you can try is taking your prenatal vitamin at night before you go to bed. So if you take a vitamin on an empty stomach, sometimes it's more likely to upset your stomach. Taking it at night, um, after you've eaten dinner, and before you go to sleep, one, your stomach isn't empty, and two, you are gonna be sleeping, so you're less likely to feel nausea anyway. So try that, see if that helps. Um, but sometimes the, just the pill itself can make you feel sick on the stomach. So this time around, what I did was I was taking a daily multivitamin before I got pregnant. And then whenever we had our positive pregnancy test, for the first, I would say eight weeks, I took the one a day prenatal soft gel. Um, after that, I was like, this pill is too big. I just, <laughs> once I ran out, I did not get any more of those. But what I did get was, the one a day women's petite. Now I like this one because the pill itself is little. This is how big the pill is, okay? So instead of having this huge horse pill, I have this tiny little thing. Now the serving size is two of these. So I swallow two of these at night. I keep this on my nightstand. Um, and I always bring water to bed with me because I'm thirsty all the time, but I don't forget to take it because it's right there in my face. Um, this one has a little bit less iron than recommended for pregnancy, but the calcium is so much higher than any of the other prenatal vitamins that I saw. Most of the prenatal vitamins had 12%, 14%, 19% of your daily amount of um, calcium. This one has 31%. And like we said, for me, getting calcium is one of my biggest priorities because I don't eat a whole lot of dairy otherwise. Now, a lot of people also focus on DHA or fatty acids. These are good for brain development. In our house, we eat salmon all the time. So I was not as focused on having a prenatal vitamin that had DHA in it, but every now and then I will take um, just a fish oil supplement. I don't know if you can read that. Um, it has a little bit of extra vitamin D in it as well. Um, and whenever I remember, I'll go ahead and take that too. 
So, like I said, most important thing, find a supplement that fits your personal needs and that you are going to take. If you have any questions, take whatever you, you're thinking about, take it to your, your provider, take it to your appointment, let them look at it and make sure that it fits what you need for your pregnancy. Um, our American diet is just, generally speaking, so poor that it is important to supplement your body to make sure that you are doing well um, and that baby gets what they need while you're pregnant. Comment down below, what did you what did you take during pregnancy? How did you decide on how to, on what prenatal vitamin to, to use? Um, it would be really interesting to see kind of other people's thought process and how this goes. All right guys, thanks for watching. Subscribe to my channel. We're almost at 100 subscribers. I know this is, this is small, this is a small community, but I'm so excited for all of you guys that are here. Subscribe, let's get to 100. Share this video with someone that you think might be able to use it. Um, and I hope you guys have a wonderful and healthy day. See you in the next one, bye.